If I had a dollar for every event that you guys send my way to do and I try to so you don't have to on that didn't end up actually happening, I would be able to throw my own event. That's it. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda watching Swell Entertainment, and today we are talking about uh, a divinity ball or a land of dreams ball. They are the same thing, but also not. It's a lot. Basically, this is an event that was mainly pitched to book talkers by book talkers on TikTok. This is a screenshot from their website talking about the next round of ticket drops, which was going to happen on February 1st. So I had heard of a Land of Dreams ball a lot over the last year or so, um, because a lot of you sent it to me. You, a lot of you guys were like, oh my God, would you review a ball? Swell so will go to this. It's a book talk event. You've got to go. And I looked at it and honestly, because of how far out it was, I did not trust it. I have put money into events that are farther out. For example, I did that with the Bridgerton experience with Queen's Ball. However, that was put on in collaboration with Fever, I believe, Fever events. I have done quite a few of their experiences before, so I trusted them as an event uh, coordinator for it to actually happen. And also they were in collaboration with Netflix. Netflix usually makes sure that their things happen because there's money in that for them. I had no idea who any of these people were. I had no idea if it was actually gonna happen and it was a little too far out. It was giving very much like order now to get your product maybe in six months. And so I didn't trust it, so I never bought a ticket. Then all of a sudden I started getting a few promoted videos for a divinity ball. I assumed it was a completely separate event. I'm sure if I started digging, I would have seen that it was the same event, but I just never actually got the actual chance to. But it's my understanding that it was not the Divinity Ball for very long. But here's what happened. So A Land of Dreams, events and publishing, it was supposed to take place in Nashville, July 27th and 2024. And like I said on here, the next ticket drop is going to be, was supposed to be February 1st. A Land of Dreams Ball is an immersive experience bringing you adventure, scandal, entertainment, and so much more. Play your hand at becoming the queen's heir on this one night only. There's numerous typos in this, uh, just punctuation issues and things like that, that I'm like, Okay, not that that's like an example of this being like fraudulent, but it does point to a lack of uh, direction, a lack of oversight, a lack of spell checking. The copy on your website to get me to buy a ticket should at least be grammatically correct, okay? I don't think I'm wrong in saying that, especially when your organizers, some of whom are Authors. There's a lot of talk about the quality of writing that goes into popular book talk releases, but that's not what this is about. But this does not bode well. Uh, so meet your favorite authors, influencers, live entertainment, get sorted into your court, and so, so much more. And then there's also cosmic hours included in our lucid dreaming ticket. This sorry, this it's like green text, like like this color text on a pink background and I am dyslexic. Cosmic Hour is a fun-filled hour and a half of meeting with your favorite authors, bookish influencers and vendors. Come meet all your favorites with a one-on-one -on -one experiencing while you enjoy a few drinks on us. I'm not being a smart ass, that is what it says. I'm telling you, we can double check things. We can reread them. Have someone else read it. Book signings, meet and greets, panels and more. Okay, find our Facebook page here. Is this still active? No, it's not active anymore. Wait, no, I thought it was gonna load. Brought to you by author Keely Hargis, K.M. Woods, and book influencer B. Spade. The five courts of the Land of Dreams. So apparently the Land of Dreams ball was going to involve getting sorted into a court. And then if you were chosen from this court at the ball, it was like an immersive, like it was like, it was like, like the Queen's Ball experience where you are participating, but also watching a show is my understanding, but it sounds like there's less of a show involved and you're just participating in the actual event itself. So like, for example, I was dancing with some of the actors involved in the uh, Queen's Ball experience. They were also putting on a show and doing dances as well. And then at the end, someone was chosen to be the diamond of the season, okay? If you wanna go watch that video, I was not chosen for the diamond of the season, but I had a lot of fun at the event and I think that it was a good video, so you should go watch it. But get sorted into court. Find out what court best fits you with our court quiz. Should I do the court quiz? Oh my God, we're doing the quiz. Okay, guys, we're doing the quiz. Pick a season. Okay, let's do. We have fall, summer, winter, spring, fall. Pick an animal. Ooh, let's do a wolf. Dress the screen one's kind of cool. What best describes you? Brave and fierce, cunning and wicked, loyal and nurturing, powerful minded and creative, protective and loyal. <laughs> 
brave and fierce. Um, let's go powerful minded and creative because I am clinically insane. If an enemy threatened me, I would unalive them first. Oh my God, we're using TikTok sensor language. Hold on. <laughs> you could just use the word slay them first, like slay them. This is a fantasy ball. They're slaying unalive. Oh my God. Talk with my court before acting. Hide away until I came up with a solid plan. Make them wish they were never born. Declare war. They threatened me. Well, what's the threat? What's the threat? I'm going to spill wine on you. Is that the threat? I'm going to steal your man. Have at him. I'm going to destroy your kingdom. You know, like what well, I need to know what the threat is. Hide away, that never works out well. Make them wish they were never born. Let's do that. Pick a mask. Ooh, these all look the same in different colors. Let's go gold. Nova, you are court Nova. You guys, I have the wolf court. You guys. What? You are Court Nova, a daring soul that one does not cross. You're cunning, lovable, and often known as a prankster. I am a god of chaos. People tend to take you for granted, but you don't mind because you always come out on top. That does, those, mm. You know, like take, you take me for granted, but then I come out on top, were we competing? Am I wrong in thinking that doesn't make sense? <laughs> okay, anyways, William, I expect, you two declare what you got. So Court Nova, okay, back to the topic at hand. And then if you wanna be a royal guard, you could also apply to volunteer. Let's look at the application to volunteer. Thank you so much for your interest in volunteering for our ball. Please thoroughly read this description of what being a volunteer entails before filling out the form. First and foremost, please do not sign up to be a volunteer just to get a free ticket. We are looking for people who are dedicated to helping set up, break down, clean, help keep events organized, participate in theatrical events throughout the night. It is a time consuming job. Yeah, cause it's a, it's a, it's a work and all. This is the, mm, this is what gets me about so many social media events that drives me crazy. I see this mainly with influencers. I don't know the size of these authors or this influencer that they are involved in the bookish event because there's it's a different scale, it's a different industry than say Tanacon style of things, that type of thing. Events are expensive. Most events do not make money. Expect to lose money on a first time event. I get having volunteers to like help with things, but you should also have people running the event that you do in fact pay. And also the volunteer thing, I think if you're gonna not pay them, you should let them at least enjoy the experience to some degree. It's my understanding that the Divinity Ball change happened a little over a week ago at the time of me recording this. I'm recording this at the end of January, okay? Is that it started being promoted as Divinity Ball or all of that. And that something was going to be coming out about one of the organizers and that it was not that serious. It was over a cosplay and that, um, you know, that's, it was just lies, was all manufactured and that, you know, this is not what this person believes in, that type of thing. That this was told to this one author who was involved in the event or advertised as going to be involved in the event. So uh, this is the Dina Orama uh, account and she is another book talker, I believe an author as well, who uh, is the one who posted the video talking about this experience she had with one of the organizers, I believe, of, of Land of Dreams Ball. The husbands and them were all hanging out and she said, I don't like Joe Rogan because they were talking about how much they like Joe Rogan. And then other husband called that husband, uh, said n-word get your woman don't ask me about it because i got sent to cease and desist by a company on book talk she's working with instead of asking for proof they sent me a cease and desist for trying to inform one of the business partners of who they were working with. The person in reference here has deleted their account. It's not surprising to me that they just made the move to delete their account because it's kind of hard to come back from something like this. You can try, but you gotta have a really thick skin and not a lot of people do. At the end of the day, influencers have the ability to influence and it's my understanding that B was one of the influencers involved in this event and so, in order to maintain your influence, people have to like you. And when things like this come out, usually goodwill and someone's opinion of you goes down. So it's not surprising that they were like, okay, gonna just remove my account from the platform. A cease and desist, again, I've heard this, this happens quite a bit in the commentary space over the years, um, where someone makes a hate video of someone and they're like, they send a cease and desist and then they get backlash for sending a cease and desist and they're like, it's a warning. A cease and desist is a warning of legal action. A cease and desist is not don't talk because you don't know what's gonna happen. A cease and desist is, uh, 
I have plans to sue you if you don't stop because I have grounds to sue you. Most of the time, especially in the commentary space, it's not, there's no grounds to sue someone. Someone just talking about how they don't like you on the internet is not grounds to sue someone. So it's not grounds for a cease and desist. Apparently this was not a legal cease and desist as far as what I can tell, uh, but it was stated as a cease and desist, okay? Which was then, so it's like, no, it's a warning. A warning for what? Someone's allowed to share their experience. I'm allowed to talk about the products that I do, the events that I do, because I am a paying customer and I'm allowed to talk about my experience. This is a visible Yelp review. That's what this is. And you can have issues with Yelp as a platform and all this stuff as well. But still, it's legal for me to make these videos and talk about the things that I do. Same goes with Deanna talking about this experience that she had with a, someone herself. You know, she's allowed to do that. I believe there is a question of legality of alerting someone to like the work their job or whatever, like, hey, you work with this person, this is what they're capable of. I think that's where the issue could come in because you could potentially say that you were trying to uh, affect their income and loss of wages and things like that, and they could potentially sue you for that. However, it sounds like B is not the one that sent the alleged cease and desist, it was the company itself, the Land of Dreams LLC, and that is not what? And so I think that's why they had this like all hands on meeting or whatever with the authors that had like agreed to participate or whatever in a land of dreams. Like, hey, this is what's going to come out because Deanna was like, okay, I'm going to talk about this at some point, like, or whatever. They basically threatened her and you have the right to speak on that. As far as what I can tell, the cosplay element of things seems to have been their own omission. And was it even B who did it? So this is another person uh, who I've talked about on this channel before, Lim Maddie 8 uh, She's the one who does uh, Book Talk News. Great account if you wanna follow her. Uh, again, Maddie. Immaculate, incredible, great reporting, obsessed. But she showed that uh, the further uh, image from Deanna of the actual people that were listed in the parties involved of the cease and desist and included authors of a Land of Dreams ball, vendors of a Land of Dreams ball, influencers of a Land of Dreams ball, a couple different LLCs, all this stuff, and then obviously the organizers and the original influencer involved. And did not tell any of them that they were going to be doing this. They were not asked, they were not alerted. They were just like, oh cool, I can see now that I'm related to this bogus cease and desist without my consent, which you just can't do. So I'll be reading, ended up making an eight part uh, explanation of this, including talking about the uh, cosplay. It seems like they self-reported the cosplay, which was that their way of trying to get out of the n-word thing. Like, it's like you pooped on the carpet and then you threw a rock at the other place you poo you pe where you peed on the carpet to like distract from where you pooped on the carpet, you know? I know that's a really weird analogy. I don't know why I said it like that. I'm looking at my dog and he has definitely peed on my carpet before. So maybe I'm thinking of that. So this is the brown face cosplay that she did. She was trying to look like tree bark. Many people who was like friends with her or saw this cosplay told her that it may be misconstrued as brown face. Here are some screenshots she pulled up of the comments of people saying that because because this character Alice from Akatar, I believe, is considered a POC, not just like a tree person. And this is like the reference photo she had for the cosplay. Showed an example of someone with like tree bark, like face makeup that they had done on half of their face, or they like uh, showed screenshots of messages that they had sent. Hey, if you know anyone who's a POC that does cosplay, would send them our way. This was my second inspo other than the coloring book. But if we can get someone who's a POC and not have to worry about special effects makeup at all, that would be amazing. So like that one author said as well, after all this was coming out, they were like, oh yeah, there's going to be a video coming out uh, that's trying to spread lies about us. Again, I'm trying to understand who brought up the cosplay thing. Pooping on the carpet and then throwing a rock and then peeing on the carpet, you know? But then the, she addressed everything. So I'm trying to understand why you brought that up, you know? But maybe it was brought up previously and I'm just missing that span of time because so much has been deleted. This author also had some things to say if you wanna watch her videos because not only are the authors and vendors and influencers who were originally supposed to go to these events wanting to pull out and piss that their names were signed in a thesis that they did not consent to, they are now holding their money hostage. They are offering some money back for the fees paid, but not all of it. So they're holding their fees, which originally they were told that they would be financially secure if they chose to pull out, that they would get their money back. But it seems like that is a lie from Land of Dreams slash Definity Ball. Ha hashtag blessings. Hey, I don't care what it's about. If you do not get my consent for a cease and desist thing, you are misrepresenting me. 
as an individual and also as a business person. Like this is that I don't associate that with me, excuse me. And author Luna Lawyer is uh, another account that's talking about this. I was going to be a attending author at the Land of Dreams Ball. Now, conveniently known as the Divinity Ball because we're going to just sweep things under the rug. As on one, 21, 2023, Atlanta Dreams Ball has officially shut down. This includes two of the previous owners, Kaylee and B, and are now completely unassociated with upcoming projects. Good morning, everyone. The ball is currently under rebranding and changes in management due to racism and discrimination by a previous owner. Okay, so they did take her out. But again, we're gonna talk more about bad business practices in a second. Luna said, I wanna pull out of the event. And she was sending that before it was rebranded to Divinity Ball, okay? She sent it to them because she did not agree with one, the legal action, but also she stood with the POC community and she did not like how Deanna was treated and her Deanna and her husband were treated. So she wanted to pull out and she was sent this email from Divinity Ball. Dear Luna, I'm sorry to hear that you will not be joining us at the ball in 2024. We respect your decision and wish you nothing but the best in all of your future endeavors. Unfortunately, the table fee which you paid is non-refundable. As stated in the original invitation email, you received prior to joining our lineup. If you have any further questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out. Blessings, Divinity Ball. Luna, when receiving the acceptance email to a Land of Dreams Ball, participants paid a non-refundable fee to a Land of Dreams LLC via PayPal invoice. With that said, Divinity Ball still falls under Land of Dreams LLC. We have just rebranded the name and removed previous owners. However, we are potentially offering up a settlement of $100 for the fees paid as a refund, but we will need time to contact the vendors that are involved with the previous owners to issue refunds for costs paid already. We hope that you will find these terms agreeable. Blessings, Divinity Ball. Fees paid already from the vendors. Um, If I buy a table somewhere and then use... <laughs> You're taking money from Peter to pay Paul. It's not a Ponzi scheme, but it's basically what you, it sounds like you are explaining you're doing, which is why I can't refund you right away because we already used your money to pay other people. That's not her problem. She bought a table to participate in an event. If that fee goes to paying something, then that's one thing. But if she's not gonna be there, then her money should not go to paying the event, okay? Okay. Like I said, they said they were going to be protected financially, but now they're not going to be refunded. This is what they are now including in their refusal emails when refund is requested. Furthermore, the financial protection was in case of legal action being taken, i.e. a lawsuit from another party. Any Zoom calls after Friday the 20th, the new owner was not a part of, and there is no written documentation given to the new owner about said conversations. Blessings, if I, if I see another blessings, I would lose. It. Blessings. We're screwing over financially. Blessings. We shielded racist behavior. Blessings. Blessings. <laughs> Blessings. Like, excuse me? New owners are not involved, so they're not particular. Yes, you are, okay? Because you were involved as a vendor contract, it'd be a different situation. So therefore, you did not agree. Another author said, I did not agree to be a part of Infinite Affin Divinity Ball. Affinity. Divinity Ball. So therefore, I should not have to pay continue because I paid for a land of dreams ball with this is no longer it sounds like so therefore I should not have to I should get a refund I agree this is now a different event we rebrand it it's the same thing it's still the LLC no it's now a different event you rebrand it it's a different event refund them my god so Saturday night they got this in the author uh Facebook group okay this is from author Jordan a day hello out everyone I apologize for the super late night message but there have been some developments of which you you all need to be made aware. Due to recent events and things that have been brought to light as of 1 2023 two of the former co-owners have been removed. So the ball is now owned by KM Woods and myself. We are also undergoing a full rebrand, including but not excluded to changing the name from A Land of Dreams to the Divinity Ball. We are in current contact with the content creator from which the issues to brought to light to resolve the issues at hand. You will all be receiving a formal email in the next 24 hours from Divinity Ball at divinityball.com with further details of all the changes we are making to ensure that this event is safe and inclusive and an event for everyone, all the love. So here's the statement on Instagram uh, from the Divinity Ball. I believe this is now deleted or not public anymore. Uh, good morning. I wanted to come on here to discuss things that have progressed over the last 24 hours. I want to begin by saying racism is not tolerated here on any level and never will be. As of one, A Land of Dreams has officially shut down. This includes all the previous owners, Kaylee and B, and are now completely unassociated with upcoming events. That one I can't read. Want to be company that was associated with racism or discrimination. The decision was made extremely late last night and has been personally worked, and I have been personally working on the separation for hours and why this post is being released as soon as I've woken up. The choice was not for them to sign the ball to me 
or I would pull myself from the event. I apologize for the delay on this notice as we have been dealing with the legal and physical aspects of this change. I reached out yesterday to Deanna personally with an apology to her and sorry, this font is horrible and it's tiny. Are my actions have done and discussed the steps I am actively taking to make this change. I felt she deserved an apology directly to her and her and be notified of everything just have been in these events. I do not wish any pity. Da, 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 da. With this information said, myself personally, on behalf of my company, I would like to make a formal apology to anyone who's been affected by these actions. With all this information said, I'll take a break from socials for a bit while I work on my own mental health and sh sort things out legally. And then thank you. They then made a statement on Instagram, which they deleted shortly after, and then responded to us that the reason we were not getting refunds is because even though they are now Divinity Ball, they're still a Land of Dreams LLC and it's the same company. So again, when receiving the acceptance email, you agree to not get a refund. Uh, furthermore, the financial protection, again, yoinking everything. And then Jordan shared uh, her response to that. When signing up for the event, I signed up for a Land of Dreams ball. As you've announced, that event has been officially shut down. That wording is important. I have attached a photo of your official statement to this email for reference. Regardless of what company is putting on the event, the event I have signed up for is officially canceled. I expect my deposit of 150 to be refunded back to me within 24 hours. Good, fair, agreed. And then this morning, I wake up to this bullshit email. At first glance, I'm like, cool. They, at least they decided to cancel the event. But then I continue reading and see that they are blaming authors and vendors for this event canceling. Like, like what the actual fuck? A good chunk of the authors apparently have heard nothing that were involved in this, but some of the authors that had reached out directly got this email. In light of the effects and damage sustained to this business and reputation, we withdrew from social media to regroup and fact find. Due directly to the withdrawals of authors and vendors, Land of Dreams Ball, AKA Divinity Ball, has been forced to make a decision to cancel as of 124, 2022. I think that's meant to be 2023. I, I believe that's 2023. Please make take this as a public notice. We will meet with our business advisor and update further on monetary issues and we'll make direct contact with authors and vendors. Regretfully, Land of Dreams LLC, Land of Dreams Ball, Divinity Ball. So they are now blaming the pullout of authors and vendors from the event for why they have to cancel the event. Even though they were having issues with, they couldn't refund the event to begin with, which again, refunding the tickets for something that you canceled is not their fault. You canceled the event they were associated with. If you then pitched them, hey, we're gonna do Divinity Ball instead, and they then decided to do it, and then we're like, actually, no, yoinking that, then you would have cause to, not, I don't even think you would have cause to blame them then. You, it costs, it takes money to make money. You should go into an event with the thought that you have to spend money on the event. You should not only rely on the money you are going to bring in from attendees, vendors, that for putting on the event. You should have some form of capital to start with. I get, hey, we're putting in our own money and then you're gonna pay yourself back with what was done. That's one thing, but you should expect that you have to put your own money in. So the fact that, oh, these vendors pulling out is now completely ruining the event and now we can't do the event because of X, Y, and Z, that's Mm, bad business. And you shouldn't have had the event in the first place. Probably would have been a mess based on what I'm hearing. Now the event is officially canceled. You have to get your refund in a timely fashion. So you can, just, if you paid any money for this event, you should be getting a refund. You should demand a refund. So the tickets were sold via Eventbrite. And so uh, make sure reference section 1.2 subsection B when requesting your refund, because I believe that's the ones like if the event is canceled or anything changes, like you have to get a refund uh, or they are subject to uh, legal backlash. So there you go. If you paid for a land of dreams, demand a refund. Just use personal discretion when you're trying to put money into something that's so far in advance um, like this. Like this was, at the time of me seeing this, it was close to two years out when I started hearing about a land of dreams ball and things like that. That's a little far for my liking. I guess it's closer to a year and a half, you know, but a year I can understand. I buy events, I buy tickets for events in a year, but this is also my job. I can afford to do that because I have a set amount of money that I know for a fact I'm probably not gonna get back, you know, because it's my job, um, but that's not the case for everybody. So again, use your own discretion, critical thinking skills. I know you all have them, flex them a little bit. I heard something from someone recently. It's like, you know, if you are going to be associated with an event, be comfortable with the fact that your name will now be in association with everyone else on the event. If you are not comfortable with something that someone else involved in an event is doing, you have the right to pull out. You have the right to not wanna be involved. That is your personal right as an individual. 
And you shouldn't feel bad about that. And the event itself should not make you feel bad about that. That's going to be it. Um, had you heard about a land of dreams ball? Had you heard about a divinity ball? Were you one of the people who sent it to me and were like, you got to go to this. Um, do you want me to go interview an actual ball, 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 ball? I don't know why I said it like that. Let me know. Comment down below. Reminder, I have a podcast, the Social Hands podcast. This honestly could have been a shenanigan, but I wanted to break it down here because you guys were sending it to me and being like, are you going to talk about this? So I figured a video would be better. Plus there's a lot of visual aids involved in this. So I figured that would do better. If anyone involved in this situation would like to reach out to me, if you want to come on the podcast, we could do that. That would be good. I think minder, I have merch like this mug. I'm sure I'll make a design for this video. That's like, that's not how cease and desist work or something like that. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for my on Patreon. If you'd also explore my Patreon, leave us down below. Next one, me on social media. They'll be all up here and that's going to be a hell of a day. Goodbye. It's funny because I see so many videos out and about. It's like, why don't we have balls anymore in like our society? And apparently it's because of things like this. <laughs> Thank you. Andrew, Alan, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Crispy, Crash, Bishi, Dinah, Journey, Don, Donnie, Elliot, Evan, Eric, Eyal, Hopeless, Homer, Incognito, Isaiah, Zachary, James, Joe, John, Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Kim, Kristen, Lamb, Lex, Lisa, Luis, May West, Madeline, Matt, Matt O, Matthew, Meme Lord, Michael, Mia, Michael J, Michael T, Micah, Nathaniel, Nocturnal, Pat, Penn, Richard, Rob, Red, Robert, Ross, Ryan, Sam, Serena, Ciara, Skylar, Simon, Tasha, Timothy, Heavenly, Plastic, Tenzin, Tom, Thomas, Querty, Randy, Wendy, William, Winter, Will, Zendry's Wink.